Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the Z text editor. It is a text editor similar to Sublime. It is a pretty new text editor, so it also won't have as many extensions as Sublime, I think. Uh, it is uh, available for Mac and recently available for Linux. And I want to share with you how I set it up so I can make it a nice little lightweight editor um, alternative whenever um, I want to just open up something quick and easy and don't necessarily want to work on uh, pie chart, which is actually my ID of choice. So um, anyways, let's uh, let's get started. So when you you have the option to download um, Zed and install it uh, a couple of ways, so I won't necessarily go into that. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the page real quick. Um, if you go to the download link, you'll see that it's now available on Linux. Um, and I want to skip over to the documentation. Um, I think the way that um, Zed is configured really handy. Um, so I wouldn't like make too many changes myself, um, but I will show you what the changes that I've made uh, for you know my purposes. And um, so if you go over to Docs and then Configuring Zed, uh, you'll find a list of settings. And as I mentioned, most of them are pretty cool. I did change this auto save to be on focus change, meaning when I move away from my file, it'll automatically save it. Um, but anyways, check it out. Uh, a lot of I think a lot of the defaults are, you know, probably uh, things that you'll um, be happy with, right? All right. So when you uh, download Zed and you open it up, you'll be at this. Uh, you'll 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 be taken to this basically welcome window. Uh, here you can choose a theme, which I thought was pretty nice. That's one of the first things that you're given an option to, right, to, uh, to kind of just uh, customize it in that sense. I think that's one of the more important things. Uh, then choosing key map, I really like this because you, you know, depending on where you're coming from, whether it's Sublime Text, VS Code, or JetBrains like myself, you can choose, um, you know, your, your base key map. So I choose chose JetBrains. Um, also, this button, install the CLI, it'll make Z available on your terminal. So if you need to open a file, you simply type Z in the file name and it'll open it up. Um, and then I like this feature a lot, signing into GitHub Copilot. I don't know that this is available for Sublime. I like that it's available here. Um, so you can simply click on this and it'll take you and authenticate you to GitHub Copilot. So it's really nice. I haven't explored any other extensions and I don't, uh, I didn't enable Vim mode simply because I'm not a Vim user. So there's really no point in complicating my life. So um, anyways, uh, that aside, um, I want to go ahead and first look at uh, or open up my panel, right? Because I opened up a project and just talk about how I set it up real quick. So one of the first things that I did was create a hidden folder. So you do that by um, basically right clicking and you can say new folder and then uh, just rename or name it dot ZED. Um, and then within it, create a settings JSON. I will link this into uh, the description somewhere so it's available to you. So uh, the first thing that I added was um, autosave on focus change. So when I go move away from my file, it'll automatically save. Uh, I don't have to hit command S. Uh, then the next thing was to uh, set my Python path, right? So basically I'm saying, hey, this is where my Python exists. Uh, and I'm uh, directing it to uh, one of the virtual environments that I set up actually. So this is um, my Python there. The next thing was format on save. Um, essentially, I pipped installed into this virtual environment um, rough. And so whenever I'm going to uh, or whenever I save a file and really when you when I focus away from it, right, um, it'll run the rough uh, formatting command and it does some, you know, really nice uh, formatting uh, of your code, which I think it's you know very beneficial because a lot of times you know, sometimes we'll indent kind of odd and then we'll, our, our code kind of looks inconsistent. So having this is, I, I felt like a really nice little uh, plus. Um, the last thing is PyWrite. So another thing that I did install in my virtual environment is PyWrite. And uh, in order for PyWrite uh, to pick up which libraries I have available in my virtual environment, uh, and then kind of, um, you know, let alert me to that as I'm writing code, is basically uh, let it or set my Python path to the virtual environment. And so it knows to look there for the libraries itself. So this is step one. Step two um, is, you know, uh, creating a PyWrite config file. Um, and I think this probably serves as the same purpose as, as the other one, I feel. 
uh, but let's just set it there just in case. Um, essentially, I'm just doing two things, uh, setting the virtual environment path uh, to the folder where I have all my virtual env environments, and then uh, vem to the name of the virtual environment. And I think uh, with that, you should be good to go as far as Pyrite is concerned. Now, as I mentioned, don't forget to uh, pip install uh, rough and Pyrite into your virtual environment that you're working in. Uh, the next thing that I want to show is um, what rough does, right? The, the formatter on save. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this blank file, this test file. And you notice as soon as I start editing it, it has this little blue dot. Uh, basically something uh, work is in progress. So I can say print one, two, three, four, five. And as soon as I uh, focus away onto some other file or something else, let's say, for example, click on this other tab, you'll notice that the little blue dot will go away, signifying that it has saved this file. Now, what, uh, what I really like is this uh, formatter within rough that I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, I'm going to focus away. This is going to auto save. And when I come back to this, uh, this formats as it should be. So I really like that feature in terms of rough. So I, again, highly recommend it. Uh, pip install and then um, you know uh, update your settings file uh, like here and I will share this later uh, the next thing uh, here is uh, that I want to showcase is the terminal so if I hit if I yeah enter uh, control tilde I will be prompted with my terminal down right down here now um, I'd have to go into you know my uh, directory in order to um, execute this file right um, because Z does not like out of the box come with a way to execute uh, this program like through some shortcuts bindings or whatever uh, and neither does sublime but sublime you know uh, there's there's a way to set it up and, and I believe there's a tutorial out there um, so uh, as I said um, it's a lot maybe to expect from an editor but uh, I'm gonna show you how how to do that and actually you got to give credit to um, uh, to someone who posted on Reddit, so I'll, I'll provide that link as well. But essentially, if I wanted to run this file, I would have to activate my virtual environment, which is the YT scripts. And now that I'm in my virtual environment, I would say Python test.py, right? And so it would run this code above and show me uh, my program. Now, if I wanted to, um, let's say, do that shorthand. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the files and the configuration that I have right now. But essentially, now I can just hit or type Command R, and it'll run my file and uh, give me the results right there. So that is like very nifty. Um, and I, I really like that feature. So let me show you what I did for that. Uh, the first thing was to, you know, create this custom uh, run file. And uh, and as I mentioned, I'll, I'll link the code in the description. The only thing that I changed uh, from the example was uh, on the code, it just noted Python 3 or Python. And it's basically, uh, this is the command that's going to execute your uh, your file. Um, or it's going to point to the executable, your Python executable, excuse me. Um, because I have virtual environment, and I think many of you probably do, I just basically set the full path uh, to the Python executable in my virtual environment. Uh, and replace that with just the simple Python 3 that was there. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. The next thing, uh, open up my key maps uh, file, and you can do that with Command Shift P and type key map, and uh, just open up this uh, key map. And you'll be taken here, and I added this extra glob of text right here, uh, where it says, uh, I'm sorry, first one, uh, where it says context is workspace, and then bindings, uh, Command R in order for me to run uh, the task um, and I'll show you the task in a little bit and the task name being run file uh, then I also opened up my task and you can do that again with command P and then uh, type task and then open local tasks uh, and you'll be taken to this task.json inside the config.z directory and here this is the snippet of code that you have to kind of just copy and paste there are no uh, you know real changes to be made as long as you kept the custom run file named the same. If you named it something different, just make sure you update it here. And basically, the label is going to be run file uh, that's referenced in the key map, and then the description, whatever. I think it's arbitrary, um, and then the, the the shell command that you'll be running. Now, the shell command is in bash, so if you have 
uh, Z shell. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, I'm, that's currently my setup and it runs just fine. Um, so anyways, that I think that is super valuable when it comes to that. Um, and anyways, in a nutshell, you know, th those are, like I mentioned before, the settings that it comes with out of the box are pretty good in my opinion. They don't really require too much modification. Um, I just have these extra ones on focus change autosave. Um, and then of course the, um, the formatter, uh, within rough, um, you know, for, for that purpose that I demoed earlier, but, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, this makes it a pretty nice lightweight editor where you can execute things here locally. Um, and then just, um, not take up a lot of resources in your machine. So I, uh, and I really hope you like this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.